Hi folks and welcome to the channel and this is part 2 Bravo where we're going to rebuild and reconstruct the front brake calipers of Old Sporty, the ones that we took apart in part 2 Alpha. We then also will verify and check and clean up the front suspension, the shock absorbers, the uprights and the wheel hubs and put it all aside, get it some fresh paint. We'll clean up the side of the vehicle where we're going to strip off the paint so I'm back to a bare aluminum panel. Then we move on to the back where we're going to work on the rear brake drums. I'll take the drums off and then we'll check uh, how bad the condition is of the rear brake cylinders. Now the rear brake cylinders will be replaced in this video and you see how we do this. Then we mount the brakes back and then finally we move on in the back of the vehicle. A bit weird, we're going to work on the differential. You probably wonder why I want to work on the differential. Well, there is a little oil leak. Uh, on the back cover plate of the differential. So I want to have a new seal there. So, and because the brake pipe runs over that panel, it's the right time because all the brake pipes will be disconnected at time. And then I might do the work as well at the same time. And we'll do a short inspection of the differential itself. Put the cover back up and then we fill it up back up with oil. Once all that is done, then we're going to start checking the main brake cylinders on this vehicle. There are two of them. There's one in for the front wheels, there's one for the back wheels. We'll inspect them, we'll clean them up, we'll take them apart, put it back together, we test it and then we will use them to flush the brake pipes on the system. None of the brakes will be connected, only the brake pipes will be hanging loose. You put them into little bottles and we'll flush through the whole system with fresh brake fluid. When all that is okay, we'll continue to reinstall or reassemble the front suspension system, the wheel hubs, the uprights, and the brake calibers, everything will go back onto the vehicle and we'll hook up the new brake hoses between the brake calibers and the chassis. And then we'll bleed the brake system. And by then we should be done and should have a proper working braking system. So enough talk, so let's get on with it. I've been soda blasting all the different parts and this is just one side, the other side is inside. So now I'm going to spray it in the spray boot and get it all cleaned up and get it ready. I've painted the wishbones and the uprights with a special zinc paint to prevent it from rusting after we blasted it and now we are applying some glossy black paint on it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do now is to fit the square seal into the groove inside the cylinder. And I'm going to rub it one more time to make sure that there is no garbage or debris inside. All right, and then we'll put it into place. Make sure it doesn't twist. Here we go. So that's nicely in sight. So now I'm going to take the piston and wipe it clean. Uh, there's some kind of grease on it. I don't know what it is. Uh, that's part of the packing. And since I don't know what it is, I just want to have that all removed. So now, that is supposed to go in there like this. But before I put it in, I have to put some loop on the piston itself. And that's what comes with it. Don't use any other grease. This is special loop uh, for pistons. I'll leave it here for a second. And I'm gonna loop a little bit the, the rubber or the seal. I will also put up the dust cover. It really plays with me. Make sure it's properly in place. And now, gently put it in there. And we'll push it in very gently and even. Okay. 
and it's in as you can see that's all there is to it and now of course I have to lock the dust seal into place there we go that's a little bit of messing around and make sure it fits flush and that's it guys there is nothing more to it than this so here's the first one that I kind of pre-assembled already and now we're going to assemble the second one so here we go now make sure that the seal is inside between the two calibers and that the surfaces are very smooth that they are not damaged otherwise you will have a problem and they will leak so here it is you can see it's nice and tight everything is in place so now we're going to make sure that this lines up with this hole here we go I'm going to put another small one up here and then we have two bigger ones and then I'm going to pull them to the right torque there we go right and the last thing we have to do is to put the bleeding nipple in and tighten it and here they are the reward calibers I think it just turned out just fine now we still have to test them of course and make sure that the dust seal is fitted properly I also took the shock absorbers apart and these are gas uh, SPAX shock absorbers and they still work pretty well and um, I cleaned up the springs I cleaned up the absorbers themselves give them a little bit of fresh paint so now it's time to put them back uh, together and we've got a couple of rings uh, to put up and then uh, we'll put the spring up so the best approach is probably something like this and then we slide the ring on it and then we're gonna get the spring over it just want to make sure that the spring is right and she is and then all what's left is then put the big ring up first there's an adjustment ring right here that you can tighten up to make the right uh, more tough so the more you compress the spring uh, the tougher the right will be I don't know yet where to set it uh, initially uh, I'll need to find that out while I'm driving it but what I'm going to do is to make sure that both sides are set to the same distance I'm going to measure from the top of this ring to the end of that one and I will set both the same and that is 230 mil so that's what I set it for right now it may not be enough it may be too soft of the right the more I move the ring upwards uh, the tougher the right will be or the stronger the suspension will be but I'm going to leave it there for now because I have no idea what it will give me I can always uh, change it afterwards there is a second ring which I'm going to put up uh, which is the locking ring uh, so the two uh, push against each other so that way they can't move and I will lock it on the vise and then we've done a lot of work so far we have reconditioned the brakes uh, we also double checked the shock absorbers and we resprayed them we reconditioned it we took care of the, the discs and we smoothed them all out and we painted the uprights and we painted different parts of the suspension like the wishbones we checked the bushes and all that so now all that is ready to go back onto the chassis of this DAX you might notice that this is now becoming a shiny surface uh, this is now plain aluminum because the whole car is built out of aluminum with a tubular structure steel structure 
this was tacky paint and I removed the paint. I stripped it all, so that took me quite a while to do it because I didn't want it to mount the, the kit on it, the full suspension, and then having to strip it afterwards. That would be really bad. Uh, and it would be spoiling probably all the work I've done so far. So I always like to start with a very clean uh, surface. On the right, I have the kit that goes on the other side of the vehicle. But before I'm gonna start mounting all this, I'm gonna do one more thing. We're gonna fix the rear brakes. And I already removed one of the rear brake cylinders and it looks bad. Let me show you. You can see how badly corroded the old one is. It's full of rust inside. I actually had to pull out the piston here. The other side, I can't even get it out. It's stuck. So that's the part that I didn't bother to recondition because you can buy a brand new one for about 20 euros. So it isn't worthwhile trying to, to fix this. We haven't fixed the complete braking system yet. We've done the front part, but I still need to work on the rear part of the drum brakes where I'm going to replace the brake cylinder. So you've seen how badly that is already corroded. This is a drum brake and this is the cylinder that we're going to replace. So therefore we have to take the whole thing apart. Not my most favorite hobby to do, but okay, uh, it has to be done. You will see that there is an adjustment inside there and that allows you to open up the brake shoes more or less. So you can adjust it depending on the wear and tear of them and depending on the drum itself, how much wear and tear that one has. Uh, there's a spring here and there's a heavy spring on the bottom. There's also a cable underneath, which is the handbrake. So, uh, there's a lot of dust inside, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, that way, you don't get too much nasty dust around. I don't tend to blow them out with compressed air because that is, uh, of course, then making all these nasty particles airborne. So uh, let's have a look uh, on that cylinder, how bad it is. The first thing that I notice is that there's no spring on this anymore in this groove. So let's pull this off and have a look. Uh, see how rusty that is. Here, this is all rust. So no wonder the brakes are seized. And I bet you the other side is exactly the same. I uh, see. It's all rust inside. Um, not really a pretty sight, is it? What I'm going to try to do is to release this spring here. And they can be very tough to release. So, yeah, there we go. That's loose. And I'm going to keep the parts all in a box so I don't lose anything. There we go. The next thing to do is to unlock the brake shoes and this is by this locking mechanism so you need to push this uh, golden looking washer down and then turn it it's kind of keyed and it locks into a pin but if you do so you may see that the shoe is actually going to jump out because of the load of the spring so i tend to hold them in place um, with a spanner just to make sure that i don't get nothing in my face all right, and then I'm just going to use some pliers and hopefully you can see it if my pliers are not in the way. So I'm just going to grab it and then push and turn. There we go. See that? So that now comes off nicely. And this is the pin in the back which you can retract. Now I can gently release my clamp and see if the brake is gonna come out. There we go. There we go. And of course we need to get rid of that spring but first of all we need to remove the cable which is fit fit it for the handbrake so that is something you need to pull a bit and then remove that and off it goes oh, all right oh, i can leave this in for now there we go all right so we did the same thing on this one uh by the way this is the adjustment i was talking about before so it's kind of with notches here and you can turn it to open up uh, the brake shoes and now let's do the other side, right? 
So again, I grab it, I push, and then you turn. There we go. Now that it's empty, I'm just gonna hose it down one more time. Because now I can get to the back of it. Now I'm gonna try to release this one. There's two bolts in the back of uh, this cylinder. It's an M10 and then I can actually uh, pull it out. Let's hope so. Let's see if we get it off. The two bolts are removed and so are the brake pipes, but it's stuck. So a little gentle touch with a hammer should get it going. There we go, done. The most important areas are those points where the brake shoes are resting on. I've cleaned it up a little bit, so now I'm gonna give it some paint so it looks a bit better. Not that it matters too much. If you're going to work on brake drums, then don't dismantle both wheels at the same time. Do one and keep the other one as a reference because there's a lot of springs and a lot of parts inside and you might have forgotten how everything is uh, fitted back together. So the one that's still not disassembled is always a very good reference. So let's talk a bit about how all this works. So first of all, we got the manual brake cable, which is attached to one of the brake shoes. And on the top, we have actually the brake cylinder. Now, uh, the brake shoes are pivoting at the central point all the way on the bottom and they fit in like this. And in fact, they actually rest on the resting points over here. These are the ones that I have rubbed down, which we will grease afterwards. When you depress the brake paddle, these brake shoes will be pushed open like so and they will hit against or push against the brake drum and that's how you're gonna have friction and that's how the wheel is stopping however when you let the brakes go uh, they will be pulled back by a spring and i haven't shown the spring but i'll show you the spring in a few seconds and they will come back so you're gonna have a big gap here between the brake drum and the brake shoe that means each time you're gonna push the brake paddle these brake shoes have to go all the way out, meaning that you will have to push the brake pedal all the way to the floor and that's not something you want to happen. Also, even if you had the brake pads properly adjusted, you're gonna have another little issue because they have wear and tear and so does the drum. So the gap will change. Now, to make sure that the gap between the brake drum and the brake shoe is minimal, there is a adjustment system. And on this vehicle, it's an automatic adjustment system. Let me show you that. And here it is. So this is the adjustment system itself. It fits actually inside uh, the primary brake shoe and then it pushes against the other one. So let us talk a little bit about the mechanism of a drum brake. On the top, we've got our brake cylinder, which is gonna extend whenever you depress the brake pedal. On the bottom, we have a brake cable, which is a manual brake cable and a pivoting point there we have friction points in different areas where the brake shoes will sit and the brake shoes will be sitting right here loosely held in place so whenever you depress the brakes they will open up because the piston will push them open and they will rub against the brake drum and lock into place they will actually kind of settle into the curve of the brake drum because they are loosely fitted whenever you let the brake go uh, they will come back under the load of the spring now, obviously, what you don't want to happen is that this gap between the brake drum and the lining of the brake shoe is too big. If that is too big, then these pistons will have to move out very far each time you want to brake. In other words, you will have to depress the uh, brake pedal a lot uh, or all the way to the floor. This is something you don't want to happen. So therefore, there has to be a mechanism to adjust that. In order to keep the brake shoes in a proper position as close as possible to the brake drum, there has to be an automatic adjustment system. And this is the one. It's a special rod which is connected between the two brake shoes all the way on the top. And it has a tread on it and a kind of notch wheel. And that can turn. So if we turn it, you see that it extends basically. So it opens up more the brake shoes so it gets the brake shoes closer to the drum. Now this system is an automatic system. There is a lever 
which is going to grab these little cams and it will turn. Each time you pull the man, it will break. And let me show you that mechanism. So this is the primary um, brake shoe and in the back you connect the uh, brake cable. And over here you have that notch mechanism and that's the one that's going to move up that tooth wheel on the adjustment rod. Each time you pull the manual brake. In fact, it's going to be mounted like this and now you can see that better. So that will be fitted right there. And then this part uh, will go in here like so. And you can see how that is going to hit that wheel there. See how that is going to push it. And that's how that works. So you don't need, really need to worry too much about adjusting the brakes when you install them. The only thing you want to do is make sure that they are wide enough, otherwise you have to pull the manual handle or the manual brake a lot of times before it's in place. So when we're going to install the brakes, uh, I'm going to make sure that I manually adjust it as far as I can so I can still get the brake drum up and it slightly rubs against the brakes. Um, there's many different ways that you can actually uh, install brakes uh, and I have my own way and you'll see how we do that. So why don't we start installing the brakes. People use different methods to install brakes but I have my own way. The first thing I'm going to do is to grease these pivoting points for the brake shoes and for that one I'm using some copper grease. So the first thing we're going to do is mount the primary brake shoe but to do that I need first of all to install the manual brake cable which goes all the way here in the bottom. Now in your case it might be a bit different. There we go. Make sure it's nicely in place. All right, that's better. So then move it into place like so. And before you now try to put the locking pin in, I'm going to put the spanner up because that helps me a lot uh, in holding things into place. All right. So with the spanner, I can now easily fit the pin in the back. There we go. Here it is. We put the spring up and hold with our other hand the pin in the back and you see it's keyed. Then we use this little locking uh, washer which is also keyed. I'm trying to put it in the right direction. Here we go. Just turn it and make sure it locks in place. And then you can remove the spanner. All right, see how that can move? And it should, that's important. We have the primary brake shoe into place together with the manual brake cable and it's locked in place and you can see the position of this little washer here and as well the lever here, which is the adjustment lever, is spring-loaded. Make sure that this is correct and it's locked into place on the top. The next thing we need to do is to install the uh, adjustment rod. Now I'm gonna put it to its minimum length yeah? so meaning the, the screw all the way to the left uh, and while it's going to expand it's going to do this and push the shoes further open but that's not what we need now once you're going to insert this make sure the long side fits at the proper side which is this side and then we can stick that in and it should be okay and make sure that the lever is underneath so next is putting the second brake shoe on now i have my way of doing this uh, other people do it in a different way but this spring has to go in the bottom and this is a very heavy spring. It locks in this shoe there, the primary one, and then you need to drag it over to the hole in the secondary uh, brake shoe and that's tough. It's a very hard pull. So the way I'm doing this is a bit different. I'm trying to pivot it in. So I'm gonna stick it in there, I'll move it in here and then I will move it in there like so 
and get it in place. And that I found the easiest way to do. There we go. See how easy that went? You try to do this in another way, uh, it's going to be very tough. Now, of course, this will jump out. So again, you need to use a clamp to hold it in place. With all this, and now we can pull this a bit, uh, but now let's put the adjustment bar in. Right, and now you can secure it. Here we go. And that's properly in place. And I have to make sure that the grabbing mechanism is below the cam, so it should be able to grab it, right? So that all looks pretty well in place, and now we're going to do the last part. There we go, locks that in place, and place the spring. Now for that, we need to pull a bit and uh, we're going to try to keep it as close together as we can and let's see if we will be able to pull it over. I might be in the way guys but that's about the only thing I can do. All right, there we go, that's on. Check it, yeah that all looks good. Uh, we still need to do some adjustments now because now they will be way too narrow. So I'm going to try to fit the drum on and then I'll see what I need to adjust. I will adjust it by turning that notched wheel, but I will push back the lever in the back, which is holding it. So let's see if we can get the drum on. You can see this is going on very smoothly and that's because the brake shoes are way too much at the inside. Now, I probably don't need to do anything. I can pull the handbrake a couple of times and they should be self-adjusting. But I will adjust first of all myself by turning the notch. I'm gonna push back that little lever that you saw in the back a bit because I don't want that to rub against the notch. And now I can get into the hole and adjust it. And make it bigger see let me see if i can uh, give you a close-up guys so this is the cam that i need to rotate and in the back there's the lever you can't see that i'm going to push that back against the back plate so it doesn't uh, rub over it and all i need to do now is to just push this down and that will open up the brakes you don't want to go too far just do it a few times and then try to fit the drum again. Let's try the drum again. I can already feel it's a much tighter fit. See now it probably is a bit too far because no it fits. It fits. You hear this slight scraping? But it still runs quite nice. So that means the adjustment is all right. The rest can be done automatically with the manual brake. Right, so this is it guys. And make sure that the um, lever fits properly. The rear differential is dripping oil. So the seal is gone, so I need to change the seal. But the reason I'm doing this right now is that because um, the brake hose, which is over here, the brake tubes actually, these copper tubes are running over the differential. So if I want to take off the cover, I have to have the brake hoses uh, or the brake tubes loose. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it now while everything is still loose. So I'm going to take off the cover. I already ended all the bolts and now I'm going to drain the oil out of it. Now, the bad thing about these differentials is there's no draining plug on it. I don't know why the hell they did this, but what I read was that Ford said, you know, don't worry about it, changing the oil, it's there for a lifetime. But of course, lifetime now is a bit longer than what they expected, I guess. Anyhow, um, I'm going to drain the oil, then I put the new kit up, a new seal, 
close it back up and then uh, fill it up back with SA90 uh, gear oil and we should be good to go. So the way I'm draining is uh, I opened up the cover a little bit, left some screws in so it can drip out through the bottom. Not easy to get it off. There we go. While this is open, we might as well check on the differential. And I think the wear and tear on those um, pinions is quite all right. Uh, they look in a pretty good shape and there is not a lot of play. Uh, satellites look good. These are the satellites. And the crown wheel is looking all right as well. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, there's not a lot of play on it. So now let's uh, decrease this touch area for the cover. And I'm using acetone for that. And now I will try to put the cover up. The only problem is that there's a bar in the way on the top, so I need to be a bit careful that I don't rub into the seal that we just have placed. All right, I should be it about it. Let me just put a few bolts up. Gently put gently push it in and I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes that's the rear axle and this is steel and they have copper brake pipes tied down to it with tie wraps now that's so wrong you never connect copper straight to steel because that's going to cause issues and corrosion there we go it's gone so we have to fix this so I will be using some foam and I will stick it underneath the copper brake pipe and I will stick it to the rear axle and then I use some tie wraps. Now that's a lot better and it doesn't touch any metal and that's how it's supposed to be. All right, folks, the next thing we're going to do is to flush the brake pipes. And the way we're going to do this is by connecting a plastic bottle to the uh, brake pipes uh, at each of the four corners of the vehicle. None of them is hooked up to any of the rear brake cylinders or the calipers, as you can see. And that way I will be able to flush through all these pipes. Now I'm going to try this by pumping on the master cylinder. I'm not sure if that master cylinder is all right or not. Uh, that's something we'll have to find out and see if it is or if it isn't. I really hope that it's working fine, but then again, you never know. Um, it's been sitting there for a long, long time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had issues. And here it is, the two master brake cylinders. One for the front, one for the rear. I don't know what state they are in, so uh, I'm going to spray them off a little bit first. Just to clean it up a bit. And then we'll disconnect everything. Right. So let's see what state this is in. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, let me just clean it up a bit. It doesn't look like corroded. I'm going to clean this up a bit. Same thing on the other side. The most difficult part will probably be removing the uh, caps. That is always a bit of an issue. Uh, let's try if we can do it. Uh, I have very, oh, there we go, very bad experiences with this. But this seems to work. Let's see if we can get it off. 
No, it wasn't. And look at the state of that. Really bad. Yeah, that's a bit more difficult. It's coming. And the same thing is valid here. So a lot of garbage around the edges, but it looked like it sealed off pretty good. So now let's try to see what we have inside, how bad they are. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a lot of debris inside this one. Uh, this other one, that's a lot better. On the side, and now we do the second one. Hopefully, it's going to go as easy as the first one. Yeah. I never took this apart before, so it's a bit of guessing. So I see a couple more bolts here. I removed the brake pipe. We removed the bolts and the clip here. So now, I should be able to move it out. Here we go. And here it is. Uh, inside, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, we'll clean it all out. And I don't know if the plungers are still good or not, but we'll figure that out. I took both master cylinders out of the car and this one has already been cleaned up and I removed the plunger and that looks pretty much all right. The rubber is still intact and there's no damage inside. This one isn't cleaned yet and it's a bit more work on that one, but we're going to clean it out and you can see the debris inside and then we check as well the plunger. Let's see if we can get the plunger to move. Yep, and that looks good. I'm going to try to get the piston out, so I put the cover up and I will blow some air inside uh, the cylinder here and hopefully the plunger then comes out. Let's see. Whoops, that went quick. Oh wow, it just flew across the room. I should have put something in front of it, but okay, I didn't, uh, I forgot. But here it is, uh, and that looks still quite all right. The rubber is still okay. And inside, it looks good. On all four of the hoses, I taped up a plastic bottle so I can blow the hoses through without spilling too much uh, liquid or dirt on the floor. So we cleaned up the master cylinders. So now it's time to reinstall them in the proper order. So let's see if we can get them in. There we go. I'm going to try to hold it and then put the first bolt up so it stays in place. I got both master cylinders mounted onto the support and now I need to put these clips in. There we go. And then we'll push it into place. I don't know if it's in properly. Now it is in place. Yep, now it's in place. So that's good. We can close this guy up. We verified the master cylinders. We cleaned them all out and I reconnected everything. So now it's time to fill them up and pump a bit of brake fluid through the tubes. I'm using brake fluid dot four on this car. Uh, you can use 5.1 if you want, or even 5.2, but don't mix them. 5.2 is silicon based and don't mix it with 5.1 or four. Four and 5.1 are interchangeable. So the next thing we'll have to do is push the brake paddle a few times so we can see the liquid disappearing. Good. 
So the bottle's filled up quite nicely in the front and also in the back and the fluid that's inside that brake fluid is throwaway brake fluid. There's nothing you can do with this anymore. We have flushed all the brake pipes and we also know that the master brake cylinders are working and are not leaking. I was quite happy with that, that I didn't have to recondition them because they still looked very good. And now it's about time to remount the front suspension, the wheel hubs and the brakes in the front. I'm going to start mounting the top wishbone and I'm going to use some copper grease uh, to protect it a bit and I put it at the inside. Copper grease is really good because it's really water resistant. Now let's put some up uh, and now we're going to put the upper wishbone in. And with a little bit of grease this will go very smoothly. And I'm going to hold it in place with a pin for now. And I also need to keep the upright in place. And I use my dog's collar for that. So that way it cannot fall down. Now we'll put in the real bolt. It's a little bit of fiddling. There we go. Big washer in the front, big washer in the back, and a self-locking nut. There we go. So let's see if we can put this uh, steering rod onto the upright. At least we can hold it a bit in place. So, uh, with, the whisk, with the upper wishbone and the lower wishbone in place, we need to mount the shock absorber right here. But first of all, I need to install some additional brackets. There we go, that's in. And I will put a self-locking nut up. For now. And now I'll need to install the second one. goes a lot easier. Now I'm not going to tighten down those nuts yet uh, as I have still to put some bolts up. So let's see if we are able to get the shock in. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. So let me put the bolt in the top. I'm just going to put the bolt in for now in the top uh, just to hold it in place. All right. Uh, before I put it to the back. Here we go. That should just work fine. So let's uh, put the bolt up. There we go. And we'll do exactly the same with the top one now. Again, a little bit of copper grease on the bolt. It is always good because if you ever have to dismantle it again, it's going to be so much easier and you won't have no rust. So guys, that should be the suspension mount it. I still have to bolt it all and torque it all down and then we start mounting uh, the wheel hub and the disc. The next step is to bolt down the disc onto the rotor and some people mentioned uh, before that it's always good to mark how they were positioned before to prevent uh, run out because they may not always be the same. But all right, let's see how that goes. I have brand new locking bars, um, that's what you have to knock over then when, when things are in and that holds the bolt in place. So let's see if we can get it in. There we go. And 
now we need to put them to torque. Secure the bolts. Now it's time to put the wheel hub on and I'm just going to grease it in a bit. I already greased the inside of the wheel hub where the bearing is. And that should be it. And now I will grease the inside. Where the outer bearing will go. And here is the outer bearing. I always like bearings to be greased. I know gloves would be great to use, but I tend to rip them all the time and I don't have the good good feeling with them. I'm gonna put some more grease up. The next thing that goes up is a washer and the washer is keyed. Uh, let me just see where that is. Right there, I think. Yep. That's that. Then we put the nut up. Now I'm not going to tighten it all the way for the moment. Um, I need to check out what the exact uh, torque is on this. The next thing we're going to do is to torque down the wheel bearing nut. And for that you need a torque wrench. And we're going to set it to 25 uh, pound feet. And that should be about it. Right, so uh, let's do that. And you need to do this while the wheel is spinning. So this will settle the bearing. There we go. Let's do that one more time. And now I need to return the nut 90 degrees. And that should be about it. And that should be all right for the bearing. And that feels good. And now we gotta make sure that the nut uh, is staying in place. So we're going to put up a cutter pin, like so. And then bend that over. See, and that's it. And now it's time to fit the new brake pipes to the caliber. And it's always good to apply some copper grease on the sliding areas of the, for the brake pads. You know, these are these little studs, metal studs here where the brake pads are sliding over. Okay, and try to bolt it down. That's one. Okay, and now we do the second one. I'm going to set my torque wrench to 45 pound feet. Normally these bolts are between 40 and 50. I 
I have put some copper grease on the back of the brake pads and also uh, pushed in the anti-squeak plate so now I can slide them in. See they go in very smoothly. And I'll do the same with the second one. And the second one is exactly the same way. Next is to put in this little rod, feed it through, there we go. Voilà. And we are done. And then put the little clip up and you're done. And the last thing to do is to connect the brake pipe to the flexible. Okay. That feels good. The left hand side is now complete. Of course, we have not tested the caliber under pressure, but I'm sure it will be all right. And I haven't checked the runout on the disc either. I placed a micrometer onto the disc to see uh, the runout. And what I can see is that in one direction, I get about five. And in the other direction, I'm getting around 10. So I have a maximum of 15 uh, divisions of runout. So let's hook up the brake pipes and first of all I'm going to insert the bleeding nipple because that was on the wrong side. Let me clean this pipe up a bit first so I get no debris inside. Let's try to get it in there and lock it up. Just make it tight enough but not too tight. Now I want to make sure it doesn't touch anything. I'm going to lock the drums in place with some bolts because we're going to bleed the brakes. We've put up a lot of new parts on the braking system. We actually had it completely apart. So there's going to be a lot of air trapped inside all these tubes and, and cylinders and calibers. So we'll have to uh, bleed the system, have to get the air out of the system. Now, there's many different ways of doing this. If you're with two people, it's easy. One guy gets in the car and pushes the brake paddle. One it's all the way at the end. Then the other guy opens up the bleeding valve on the brake caliber or the brake cylinder. And you keep doing that until all the air is gone. Now, I'm on my own, so I can't do this. But there's a much easier solution, which is this kind of a cheap tool. Nothing really special. It has a long hose. And this kind of hose connects to the bleeding nipple. And you can open up the bleeding nipple whenever you want. And then on the other side, you got your compressor hooked up. So air flows through this gun and it sucks vacuum. So basically you're going to suck in brake fluid all the way from the master reservoir through the whole system to wherever you have it attached. And that way uh, you have a perfect bleeding and you can do it on your own. Of course, you will have to top up every so often your master brake cylinder reservoir. Otherwise, you're going to run empty and you can start all over again. Breeding the brakes is very simple. Just remove the protective cap from the bleeding nipple. Connect the vacuum tube to the bleeding nipple. Open up the bleeding valve and squeeze the trigger. And you should see fluid coming out after a while. Close it, check your brake fluid, and you keep doing this until you see no longer any air bubbles in the hose. I've placed the brakes on the pressure here, and uh, I'm going to leave the spanner on for a while and see if I have any leaks anywhere. But so far that looks pretty good. So let's look at the wheel hubs, uh, if they are actually locked up. Let's see. Yeah, and that's pretty much locked up. And I checked on the calibers if there's no leaks. So we are finished with the brakes and everything looks all right. I'm going to leave the pressure on for another half a day and check if there is no leaks whatsoever on the calibers or any of the hoses we connected because that is very important that the brake system is perfect. Then I will try to take the car for a spin on a test uh, on the road with the brakes and potentially to a test bench where I can actually measure the brake power on each of the wheels. But I can't do that before 
I have changed the engine out because the clutch is still stuck to the flywheel and that's something I still need to fix. But that's something for the next video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was a very long one, I know, but what can I say? It's a lot of work on this car and I really would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2020. If you're watching this video, because right now it is 23rd of December 2019. Bye bye and hope to see you on one of my next videos. And by the way, there is a lot more coming on Old Rusty, but right now I'm waiting for parts and that's why you don't see any videos for the moment on Old Rusty. Bye.